Welcome to my series 100 Scientists Who Influenced the World, where I've taken a diverse mix of people and broken them down into 10 different categories. There are some famous scientists as well as some lesser known ones, but all of these people have had an influence on the world. Now, throughout history, there have been numerous people that have gone against the societal, religious or even scientific thinking at the time and changed things for the future. So who were some of these perceptive pioneers? Aristotle Aristotle was born in Greece in the year 384 BCE and he studied at the Academy of Plato, another famous historical thinker, for over 20 years, equipping himself with knowledge that allowed him to later go on to become a tutor. One of the people he tutored was Alexander the Great, who would go on to form the biggest empire the world has ever seen. Aristotle is often credited as founding the science of zoology, detailing his observations about plants and animals, but also classifying species and splitting plants and animals into logical groups. He wrote about zoology and marine biology in his book The History of Animals. Some of his observations, such as the fine details of insects, were not properly observed and detailed again for another 100 years. Later in life, Aristotle went on to found his own school, the Lyceum, where scholars and investigators could come together and collaborate on projects. Aristotle continued to write about a wide range of subjects such as poetry and politics, as well as science, and his writings that have survived amount to around a million words, but this is thought to be only a fraction of the work that he actually wrote. The first genuine scientist detailing and writing down his observations, Aristotle has had a huge influence on the world. Archimedes Archimedes was born on the Italian island of Sicily in 287 BCE, though he studied in Egypt and enjoyed science, music, art and poetry. However, he particularly loved using mathematics to solve complex problems. Archimedes thought of mechanics to devise new mathematics equations, such as how to calculate the surface area and volume of a sphere. One such problem that Archimedes was faced with was to work out whether King Hiero II's crown was made of gold or of silver. It is said that he had a breakthrough moment with this problem when he was climbing into his bath and was observing the overflowing water. Archimedes realised that the volume of water flowing out of the bath would be equal to the volume of him as a person. Eureka! I've got it! He said to have shouted as he jumped out of the bath. Archimedes had realised that he could use what he knew about overflowing water and the weights of different materials to work out what King Hiero II's crown was made of. By testing the crown, he concluded that the crown was made of a mix of both gold and silver. Later in life, Archimedes was responsible for defending his hometown of Syracuse from Roman invasion by inventing different war machines. Unfortunately, Archimedes was killed when Syracuse was overthrown by the Romans. Later printings of Archimedes' work helped fuel the development of mathematics in Europe in the 1500s and 1600s. Archimedes was also responsible for inventing pulleys, the catapult and the Archimedes screw which is still in use today. I've made videos on all three of these things, so I've put links in the description so you can find out how you can make your own. Hippocrates There are not many surviving records from people who were around at the same time as Hippocrates, however what is known about him is it was born in Greece around the year 460 BCE and he learned medicine and treating patients from his father. At this time in Greece, it was believed that illnesses and diseases were punishments from the gods and should be treated in a mythical way. Hippocrates realised that illnesses and diseases actually have natural causes and could be diagnosed and treated using science, which revolutionised medicine. The first set of medical books, the Hippocratic Corpus, mostly written by Hippocrates, detailed different illnesses and diseases, their diagnoses and how they could be treated. To this day, medical professionals still take the Hippocratic Oath, which is an oath credited to Hippocrates about patient care, such as confidentiality and making sure that they receive the best treatment available. Claudius Galen Claudius Galen was born in 129 CE in Pergamum, which is now known as Turkey. 
Early in life, Galen was being educated as a philosopher. However, he wanted to study medicine, so he moved to Alexandria in Egypt, which was the greatest medical centre at the time. After many years of study, Galen returned to Pergamum and became the chief physician for a group of gladiators. Eventually, he moved to Rome, where his connections and knowledge meant that he was able to move up the ranks of society, eventually becoming the physician for the Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius, as well as the two emperors that followed him. From working with gladiators, Galen learned a lot about the human body, but he also advocated for dissecting animals to learn about bodies. This included dissecting animals such as pigs, sheep, goats and Barbary apes. From this, he did make some great discoveries, such as the fact that arteries contain blood and not air, that urine is made in the kidneys and not the bladder, and he was also able to put together detailed drawings of the heart. Galen's ideas in medicine were accepted for around 1,500 years before the next big leap in medical advancement. Chang Heng Zhang Heng was born in 78 CE in China, and he was a gifted writer with an interest in poetry. He left home at 17 to study in the cities of Luoyang and Chang'an, where he became connected with powerful people in these areas. After taking up a number of government positions, Chang Heng started studying astronomy at the age of 30 and started publishing about astronomy and mathematics. He was eventually made the chief astronomer of China and he mapped the planets, tracked lunar eclipses and also catalogued around 2,500 stars and 100 constellations. Zhang Heng's interest in mathematics led to him inventing the odometer, which would record the distance travelled by a wheeled cart. He was also concerned about earthquakes in China at the time, so he invented the first seismometer, which could track the distance that an earthquake was coming from. Zhang Heng's seismometer could pick up the vibrations of an earthquake from over 400 miles away. Zhang Heng's inventions didn't just transform Chinese science, but odometers and seismometers are still used around the world today. Al Khwarizmi Al Khwarizmi was born in Iraq in 780 CE to a Persian family, and he studied at the House of Wisdom, which was a centre for learning that would acquire and translate texts in science and philosophy from all around the world particularly Greece. While studying at the House of Wisdom, al Khwarizmi wrote his first book which introduced the world to algebra, where he detailed how letters or symbols could be used in the place of numbers to solve equations. In his second book, al Khwarizmi introduced the Hindu-Arabic numeral system, that's our number 0 to 9, and its arithmetic to the West. This became the standard numeral system that was used in the Middle East and Europe. When this book was translated into Latin, al Khwarizmi's name was translated as Algorithmi, from which we get the word algorithm, which is still used to describe the process of carrying out mathematical calculations and computing. The Hindu-Arabic numeral system is the most used number system in the world, and we still perform calculations using algebra and algorithms. Fibonacci Leonardo of Pisa, or Fibonacci as he is better known, was born in Italy in 1170 and travelled with his father who was a merchant trader. On one of these travels in Algeria, he came across the Hindu-Arabic numeral system. When they returned to Italy, he set about helping introduce this number system to Europe. Fibonacci is most well known for the Fibonacci sequence, in which the next number is devised by adding the two previous numbers together. This sequence starts 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21 and so on. It can be used to do a fun activity combining maths and art by making Fibonacci squares. The Fibonacci sequence can also be seen in nature, such as in the petals of flowers, in the swirls of a pine cone and even in the scales on a pineapple. The 23rd of November is often known as Fibonacci Day, because when you write it as month then date, you get 1123, which is at the start of the Fibonacci sequence. I've made a video previously about Fibonacci and showing you how to make Fibonacci squares, so I'll put a link in the description for you to check that out. Sir Francis Bacon Sir Francis Bacon didn't invent something new or even make exciting discoveries, but he did do something which changed the way science was done in the future.
Francis Bacon was born in 1560 in England and he was mostly homeschooled until he attended the University of Cambridge at the age of 12 to study law and then he became a Member of Parliament at the age of 20 where he would stay for almost 40 years. Aside from working in Parliament, Bacon pursued his interest in science. He felt there were flaws about how science had been conducted in the past, with people coming to conclusions without complete data of observations or even assuming things to be self-evident without applying critical thinking. In his book Novum Organum or New Instrument, Bacon laid down laws about science such as making observations, developing a theory, conducting experiments and analysing results. He even devised a table that would highlight any false generalisations. Sir Francis Bacon died in 1626, however a number of scientists had taken on his ideas and together they formed the Royal Institution in 1660, which is still around in the world today as one of the most important institutions for promoting science. Mary Anning Mary Anning was born into poverty in 1799 in England and due to her poor family situation she received very little education as a child. Instead, she spent her days combing the beaches searching for seashells that she could sell. It was on one of these trips to the beach with her brother hunting for seashells that they discovered a crocodile-like skeleton. This turned out to be the first ever complete ichthyosaur skeleton discovered. And this was not the only one of Mary Anning's discoveries. She went on to discover the first two ever plesiosaur skeletons discovered, the first pterosaur skeleton discovered outside of Germany, as well as a number of different fossilised fish. She was also responsible for discovering that belemnite fossils contained fossilised ink sacs and also for establishing that coprolites are fossilised poo. Due to her poor social situation, Annan could not fully participate in the scientific community at the time and many people took advantage of this, failing to give her the credit that she deserved. However, Anning's discoveries did provide important evidence for paleontologists who were trying to gather evidence and develop theories about the evolution of life on Earth, challenging the religious views of creation that were around at the time. Dame Jane Goodall Jane Goodall was born in England in 1934 and when she was young her parents gave her a stuffed chimpanzee instead of a teddy bear and she had said that her affection for this character is what started her love of animals. After leaving school at 18 and spending some time on a friend's farm in Kenya, Goodall became the secretary to the Kenyan archaeologist Louis Leakey. It turns out that Leakey was actually looking for people to study primates at the time to see what their behaviours might tell us about early hominid behaviour. As such, in 1958, Goodall was sent back to England to study primate behaviour while Leakey raised funds to send her to the Gombe Stream Game Reserve, now the Gombe National Park, to study primates. Goodall became the first of what was known as the Trimates, three women who studied the grey apes. Goodall studied chimpanzees, Diane Fossey studied gorillas and Bairuti Galdikas studied orangutans. Goodall's work was able to correct a number of misunderstandings about chimpanzees. For example, she discovered they're omnivorous rather than vegetarian, they're capable of making and using tools, and they have a set of previously unrecognised complex social behaviours. Goodall has written a number of articles and books about her work and has been a real pioneer for women in science. When Goodall was starting out in primatology, women were dissuaded from entering this field. However, today there is a more even split due to people like Dame Jane Goodall, Diane Fossey and by Rudy Galdikas, the trimates, who really paved the way for getting women involved in primatology. Thank you for watching this video in my series 100 Scientists Who Influenced the World. The majority of the information for this video came from the books 100 Scientists Who Made History and the Britannica Guide to the 100 Most Influential Scientists. If you liked this video please hit the like and subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all future content and be sure to check out the other videos I make such as the STEM demonstration and explanation videos, robotics and coding and STEM career interviews. This has been STEM with Mr N's 100 scientists who influenced the world, perceptive pioneers.